A little while ago, I challenged my audience, that's you guys, to create some 3D CSS stuff. It was whatever you wanted, submit it, and I would explore what you all submitted in a video. And I know it's taken a little while, but this video is finally here. I do really apologize for the delay, but the video is here. And just to say the submissions range from people who are doing this, this was their first time trying to create something in 3D. And there's other people that, there's Anna Tudor, there's Jay, and a whole bunch of others that have lots of experience doing all of this. But despite that, even the people where it's their first attempt at creating something, there's just mind-blowing submission after mind-blowing submission. There's a lot of cubes, but there's all these different takes on cubes and different takes on a lot of these things that we see coming up. So I know it's a long video. There's a lot of submissions to look at, but honestly, everybody who submitted something should be really, really proud because they're all super, super impressive. So let's go and take a look at what they are. All right, so we're gonna be diving in. And one of the things I just wanna say as we get into this, there's lots of them coming, so I won't be spending too much time on any given one, but let's go see what this one is about, because I don't even know where the 3D comes, but I'm guessing, click to interact. And there we go, we had a nice little section that, oh, look at this, we can actually go, that's so cool, that's fun. And I like here we can even see, um, we can go through and look at that, that's super cool. Uh, I wonder if I can close it. Oh, we can. We can close it back down. So, and so this one is by Emmanuel Steve P. Kawa. So thank you very much for that, Emmanuel. Let's go on to the next one. This one is by Sandeep. And I think I got some inspiration from the 3D tutorial I did with Amit Sheen a little while back. So nice job on that one. Very cool. Uh, next up, we have this slidism. And this one is by Romain LeBlonde. And here we get this nice, we can obviously download something. I'm not about to do that, but we can see this um, calendar, not a calendar. Oh, it looks like one of those games maybe. It's one of those games where you can like slide stuff around um, to try and get things in the right place. And we can see that uh, it is in 3D right there. So that's really, really cool. Next up we have a cool 3D spinning clock thing. And this one is oh, right there by um, Dawid. Krajewski, and I'm really sorry if I say anybody's name wrong. Uh, I really do apologize for that. And look, no JavaScript going on. That's all with uh, CSS, so really cool. I like the um, really nice job on that one. I like like the animation that's happening where you can sort of see it's like it wants to click over. It's not there, it's not there, and then it goes. That's a really nice sort of timing function or whatever is on there, really nice. And I guess it would just keep going because you can see um, you know, the six is slowly, I saw it move a little bit there, so I'm not gonna wait for the next tick, but very cool. Uh, I like that a lot. This next one here is by Francisco Pedroso. And, oh my goodness, I didn't know what would happen. It looked like maybe I could interact. That's super cool. Mouse, ho mouse hover to animate. Ah, uh, that's so nice. Very cool. I'm impressed. And then it goes back the other way. Very good job, Francisco. Uh, I like also the, it, it, I think for something like this, because there's so much to it, there's a lot of complexity, having this depth of field with it going, like fading away is really, really important or else it would just be too busy, but we get that sense of depth and everything with it as well, which is really neat. The next one, wrong shortcut, let's go to the next tab, is this one here by Rabin Laminchan, where, oh, there we go. I was wondering how this worked, but there we go. I can click and drag and it responds to the viewport. And uh, let me just make that a little bit bigger. There we go. So you can click and drag and get this nice little 3D plane going like that. Um, I do want to say also as I'm going through these, if you submitted one and I don't cover it, there were a few URLs that were broken. I tried to see if there was like a spelling mistake or something to fix it. And if, but just if I don't get to yours or I skipped yours, don't feel bad. I'm trying to cover them all, but there was something wrong with the URL. Um, next one up. Hi, Kevin. Check it out. 3D layer effect. Who is this one by? This one is by uh, Ranch and Huda. So let's check this one out and, ooh, that's cool. I like that. I love these things that you can deconstruct like that. That's just, yeah, that's my, I, I love things like that. I find it so cool when you can see that, this, it's nice. Very good job, uh, Ranch it, nice job. This next one is by Nick Ollier and very cool. We can see a nice cool spinning house there, a little rough, but ah, I think for the thing with this, uh, just like anything like this, it's more 3D-ness than I've done. Um, so even if it's a little rough around the edges, that's really, really cool. And all these people like Kevin, you're the king of CSS. Like look at these amazing things that you guys created. Really good stuff there, Nick. This next one is by Sasha. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I like the, the loop there where it just sort of explodes into us. I'm gonna go to the next one. Uh, but Sasha Van Den Wingret. That's a really cute bunny. Really, really cool. I like it. 
Um, all right, so next we get this. Oh, and this is another one by Sasha. So this one's, let's check it out. Oh, oh, that's, that's nice. That's a cool little toggle right there. And look at even the shadow sort of like pulls out a little further. Ooh, I wasn't, ex I wasn't sure what to expect on that, but that, that's really satisfying. Very satisfying. Nice stuff, Sasha. Cool. So the next one up is Polypane. So this is by Killian and we have this 3D effect going on right here. If you don't know about Polypane, check it out. It's a cool product. Uh, but he's brought in on the website a few different 3D-ish things where when you hover, you get like a little simple um, 3D sort of movement that comes onto these. So you can see a nice little shift there. So showing how we could actually use some 3D in production sites where sometimes maybe these all out things might seem like a little bit much. And I always get questions about why not just use SVGs or other things for some of this stuff. And I get it for sure. Um, but like we like pushing the limits and doing stuff. You can bring these nice little subtle effects into things sometimes uh, just like that. So there's Polypane and let's head on to the next one. And uh, this one is by Burton Media and Burton Media, I think Jesse Burton. So here's Jesse's where we get this sort of cool 3D-ish card coming up. Ooh, ooh, a little star, star ratings and different things. And the blur effect, you can see as I go left and right, it sort of moves around, which is always fun. These ones where you can sort of move stuff a little bit. And again, this is very similar to what we just saw with Killian, where it's a, a bit more of a subtle effect, but often the more subtle effects I think work um, really well. So very cool there. Um, by Jesse Burton. Let's go see the next one, which is a windmill. And I've zoomed in, so let's zoom back out so we can see. Oh, and it's spin. See, that's always cool. When you get like the first thing, it's already 3D. I like that there's like transparency to it. Um, just so with the transparency, you can sort of see more of the 3D-ness. And again, no JavaScript in here, which is always fun. Um, but then the, the little spinning touch on top of it is always super nice and cool. So there we go. Very nice. And that one is by, we had Jesse. It's by, I'm going to say your name wrong. I apologize. <laughs> Mad, Magic Maiso. Um, but yeah, really cool. I like it a lot. Let's head on to the next one, which, uh, oh yeah, I remember this. So this one is by um, Tobias Kongetter. And when I, when I first saw it, I was like, oh, I don't know what's 3D, but look at this. It's like, it's for previewing products in 3D and you can drag and move it around. You can zoom in a bit. You can flip it over and get front. You can get the back if it's closed. Oh, that's, that's, oh, oh, that's nice. <laughs> um, I like things like that. Closed, folds up on us. Let's zoom back out a little. Open and you see it all fold back out. We'll go back to the front. So cool. And again, once again, bringing something into production um, in a production site where it's sort of showing showing off how the project works a little bit and getting it in real time, which is obviously uh, really cool. So that's a nice one right there. Thank you very much for showing that off. And next up, we have three by Guntem. So here we have a lemon, a very yeah, a lemon. What happened? Oh, I think I can click. I see a hand. Ooh, oh, that, you know what? I mean, I, I love that 3D effect, but just even the color change is really well done. That's a nice little transition on that um, that's happening at the same time. All right, that, these things are just so satisfying, aren't they? Um, we have three here, so here's another one. Oh, there's more of a, an open, so this one's a little bit more aggressive in how it's happening uh, in terms of the movement and everything, but very cool. I like, again, here, it's kind of fun, like you're exposing more information, um, which is always cool. So number two by Guntham Jane and the third one, generate blocks. So what does that, oh, look at that. And then, oh, oh, this is satisfying because they don't just pop into place. They pop into place and then have that little bounce that comes with it. Uh, that's really neat, really cool. Three very good submissions. And if some people only submitted one and you didn't know you could submit more than one, I do apologize. Uh, multiple people asked me if they could do multiple submissions and I said, no problem, which is one of the reasons we have so many. Um, Yes, this one is a 3D dice game made purely in CSS. So I'm not really gonna dive too far into it, but I think this is really, really cool. And um, this one is by Ite, and let's just see if we can do, we'll throw Kevin in, play. Let's just see what we get here. But purely with CSS, uh, let's go with my, what about this blue color here maybe? Join game. I hope I'm not playing with real people, but I haven't. <laughs> Roll the dice. So if that's like CSS that's doing the, the, the rolling of the dice, it looks like it's a spots because they're moving quite quickly. So that's good. I'm going to abandon the game in a second and I don't want to leave anyone behind. Um, but yeah, really, really cool. I like that a lot. Do I get another turn? I want one more turn here. This guy keeps getting extra turns. Uh, here we go. 
Yeah, nice, just super cool there. Oh, oh, it's like Monopoly. I should have figured it was like Monopoly when I looked at it. Awesome, super cool. Next up, we have this one by Dinesh. And Dinesh is made this cool 3D cube, semi-transparent. Again, I like the transparentness because it just shows off that we really do have that depth. And we're getting all these different pictures, different ways of rotating around, which is fun, instead of just being the standard way. So nice little touch there, very cool. Uh, this one is by Arthur, Arthur Kettlers, and we get some 3D text. And this is, I'm assuming, using the same method that um, Amit once again showed us for 3D text. But I like this because it's an extra twist on it, right? Uh, we get the spin, but it's at an angle. The angle that it's at is actually changing. So I love that you took something that we covered in a tutorial, but you've stepped it up to like the next level of getting the whole thing to move as well as spin. Really awesome. So cool stuff there, Arthur. And yeah, I hope you had a lot of fun building it. And this one is by Remzi Mustafaz. Mustafaz? Mustafaz. It looks really cool, and I figured the book would be the 3D part. And look at that. Very, very cool. I mean, just the overall look and everything, the texture on that book is really, really nice. And then you get that nice effect. Oh, and I didn't realize it at first. You get a lot of these types of effects. But here with the shadow coming with the book opening, it gives that, that extra little dimension which is really, really cool. It's almost like the light source is the, the flame there, almost. Uh, but you get the idea, we have like a natural light source that's coming on that and it works super well. That shadow is impressive. Because um, yeah, that, it just adds that extra touch of realism with the 3D whenever we can get light sources, which are super hard to do with CSS only. It's, yeah, super cool. Good job, uh, Remzi. nice. Next up, look at this. Who's this one by? Professor 8, who is Professor 8? <laughs> Uh, this is Oleg, and just madness of cubes going on here. We have another one from Oleg, so we'll go see which what the next one is, but I'm just like spinning them. It's following my mouse movement, so if I go, I think I, I sort of felt like I tossed it. Yeah, we can speed them up, we can slow them down. And this next one is also by Oleg, like I mentioned, and here we get spinning cubes when we hover on any specific one. It's so funny, like just all these different ways of doing different things with cubes, and they're all super satisfying to watch. I don't know. I love it. Uh, this next one, some hover effects. These hover effects are by Tamani Afif. So Tamani, I keep looking, I have my, my Google sheet off to the side, but a lot of these, you know, a lot of people here are putting these in. So hover me. Ooh, fun, fun. That's so cool. And we get little delays on it going on as well. Little different movements happening. It's super cool, super fun. These are, this is like one of those like really pleasant things. If you could find a way that would work in a production site, um, where you get like, it would have to fit with the vibe and the feeling of everything. Um, but I think it'd be really cool. And without pseudo elements, that's interesting. I wonder if it's done with box shadows or something. I'm not going to dive in, um, maybe with gradients. I'm not even sure. Uh, I would, I wouldn't mind diving in at one point, but really, really cool. I like the delayed animations on some of these. So it's like an extra little bonus surprise. Um, when you're not expecting it, you think it's a regular hover until it surprises you, which is really cool. Next up, we have two by Lucas. This is the first one where you get these 3D items that you can pop out at you by hovering on top when they're in this 3D space, which is cool. I like that a lot. When we have two from Lucas here, so here's the second one. And here, yeah, this is a bit more subtle, right? Where we get this sort of the mouse movement along with it in this 3D space. And it, actually a nice little touch here is with the arm going through that, even though I guess that's all just an image. Um, it adds to that 3D depthness of everything because his arm's going through it. And it looks like it's a carousel. There we go. You get different carousel things happening, all using that same 3D space. Very cool. Nice stuff, Lucas. Here, I'm guessing this is by David Irvin. We have this floating effect right there. Let's see if we have something else on the page. Take a look at my work. We have a carousel. Is it? Oh, look at there. We go. That's cool. That's fun. I like that. It's a nice way just to not like get away from a standard carousel um, and have something a little bit more interesting. Cool. Very nice. This is also by David, and you can see we've got a lot of cubes going on, spinning with different backgrounds and stuff. Very cool. Cubes are Spinning cubes are never going to get tiring. Love it. <laughs> uh, here we have some more 3D text. Oh, and a hover effect on it. Look at that. This one is by David Kenny, and we get so the spinning text effect. We get that nice sort of like um, the whiteness in the back that just gives it the perspective, and you get this fun thing going on right there. Very cool. Up next, we have... This one, I'm going to let that, I'm already, I already like it. Uh, this one's by Damien Nowaki. No, I think it's Nowaki. Modern, modernity. Very nice. 
bonus points right there for selectable text on all of this, uh, Damien. Very cool. Nice stuff. So that's by, again, Damien Nowacki. And next up we have Cooper Runnayan. And so let's check that one out. And we get another cube, which, what's it say? I see something. Oh, hello world over there. So we get the 3D text on that is cool. So a bit of 3D text on there as it spins around. A nice shadow effect on the ground. The shadow's moving with the cube, which is hard to do. So very, very awesome uh, that you have that. And again, the shadow's super hard, but they always help give just that extra touch of realism. Now I'm wondering if there is a shadow or if my eyes are just, if the shadow is actually animated or not, or if it's my eyes that are just bugging out on me. But either way, I think it looks really good. Uh, so nice stuff on that one, Cooper. All right, so next we have this one, which is a, another clock, but very different from that previous one we had, where you can see the time ticking away and with a nice little 3D effect to drop those down. Uh, I forget the name of those types of things, but that this one is by Antonio Perrick. Coney, Parasoni, one of those two. So very nice things there. Nice. It's a very nice clock there, Antonio. I like it a lot. Oh, look at this. This one is by Caleb Tietz and it gives me a lot of reminders of um, Amit Sheen's style. So I'm guessing you learned a few things from him just with the rotating thing, the checkerboard pattern that shows us the rotating scene and stuff. Uh, but it's a little bit like the bouncing cube we did, but taken to level 100 here. Um, getting that ball to bounce between two cubes, still having the cubes smush. Uh, yeah, that's really, really cool. Good stuff, um, Caleb. This is like a screensaver style thing, right? You could just have that running and you, you wouldn't mind. Remember screensavers? <laughs> I haven't had a screensaver on my computer forever. Do, do people still have screensavers? I don't even know. Uh, another Rubik's Cube, this Rubik's Cube, and it looks like it's interactive. So we're gonna check that out. I just wanna see who it's by. This one is by Script Raccoon. So thank you very much. And oh, we had movement. How did I do that? Oh, if I click, it definitely moves. Look at that. Oh, look, I'm clicking dragging. Aha, I can choose which direction. There we go. I was, and I guess if you just click, it just chooses what to do. I'm not sure, but super cool. I love it. All right, up next we have, ooh, this, what's that game called? There was a game that had levels like that. This one is by Antonio Trefiro. And yeah, I love it. If I click, I was just curious if I could click on them to see if something would happen, but very nice. I love it. It's just the color is also super, super nice. Um, and the fading effect to make it work and it just adds that perspective to everything. Very nice touch. I really like it. So good stuff, Antonio. Thank you for submitting that. And that is the last of this set of tabs, but oh my goodness, look at this. We got a lot more to go. <laughs> oh, we got a triangle, our first 3D triangle. So this is by Bob. And yeah, some 3D, some 3D shapes going on here that can rotate between their different sides. And very cool, nice to see a different shape other than a cube. And it looks very interesting and cool. So yeah, I'm happy we got some pyramids. Or this one's a pyramid, I guess, and I'm not sure what shape that is other than a triangular prism, I guess, maybe? I don't even know. Uh, but nice seeing a different shape attempted. And I think that's a nice, a nice little exploration of different ways of doing it. It's even, I, I think it'd actually be a lot harder to do a triangle than it would be to do a cube. So I'm, I'm curious about that one. Very cool. Um, next up we have this one by Michael C. And it's a nice, oh, and the door closes. You never know what the, oh, oh. How do we open the door? It looked like it was about to open. I'm not sure how we can open the door again. Let's refresh that one. I want the door open and to see that close again. I'm not gonna dive into it, but very interesting. I guess it's the way the animation is set up. So it's only forwards maybe. And then it's only on hover, so it actually could stop at where it left off. Uh, here we have a, ooh, that's a nice little effect. That could be used for some fun stuff. Ooh, I really like that. That's by Suleiman Codes. And we have another one from Suleiman coming up after that. So that one's really fun and cool. And here's a, Suleiman, you're 12 years old. Man, I was definitely not doing stuff like this when I was 12. And the one that you're hovering on also gets a nice little border radius on there too. So a rotating, exploding cube with interesting little hover effects. It's like a, <laughs> very cool. I like it a lot. Good job, Solomon. I'm, in, I'm impressed. Oh, I remember I opened this one. I was like, oh, this is interesting. But, um, and I, I double checked to make sure it was something interesting, but this is really cool. So we're gonna dive in. This, is, this one is by Got, Gokti. Um, so let's just do my new project because I'm the most unoriginal person at naming things. And we're going to start here. We're going to do something really fast. So let's choose this. This is going to be my floor. So we're going to do that. And I guess we'll do a corner just so we can actually like have a corner. 
Uh, so that's going like that. Then let's, if we're gonna set our faces now. So let's put brick, yeah, okay. And then brick here, uh, we'll do, whoop, I don't wanna edit it. I can edit, oh, I can edit, cool. I didn't even know that. I wanna do this side with those ones just so we have something different happening. Now we need this wall. Uh, we'll put this brick one so it's different once again. And then let's choose this wall over on this side, set all of that up. So this is all setting everything up into place, which is fun. But then preview and look at this. We get to like walk around. It's Wolfenstein. <laughs> and we, oh, we even have a little mini map. I didn't realize that when I played with it last time. Yeah, I feel, back to my Wolfenstein day is really cool. Uh, you can save your world and just, I'm, I'm, I'm impressed by that one. So uh, again, that's by Got, Got T. This is by Gareth Hayes. And oh, this reminds me a little, when, okay, can I, I'm just gonna click. I'm not gonna learn the sh shortcuts. Can, I was curious if I could click and drag too. Look at this. These 3D worlds that people can build in the browser like this. Oh, and then we can push that to stop. Interesting. And then we can move, I can keep turning. I'd like it if the turning animation was a little bit faster, just because I feel like it's, we're getting a little slowed down by stuff, but it doesn't matter because it's, oh, can I open that door? I can, let's go through the door. And then we get links, tool, talks, port, oh, look at that, that's, uh, stop. Let's just click on tools and see what happens. And then we go to another page and look at that. Oh, I have an ad because I'm, <laughs> We won't watch the ad for the whatever this is. Um, but yeah, definitely really, really cool. Uh, I'm impressed by that one. And here we get a hotel building plan. This one, uh, that last was Gareth. So this one's by Emmanuel Zini. Uh, room available. Oh, so we get like the different floors and we can see how the floors are stacked. And then we can select the room that we want. Can I select multiple rooms? Ooh, I can. So if I wanna book those rooms, you can know if you're getting rooms next to somebody else or something like that. You can see where the stairs are because you don't wanna book the room next to the stairs so it's quieter or the elevators especially. Uh, yeah, that's fun. That's really cool. And it gives it that little 3D perspective, maybe a little bit more on the shadow or something. You don't want it overlapping though because you get more of a sense of 3D if there was a bit of overlap on them, but then it would make it less usable. So usability is obviously the most important. Yeah, that's really awesome. And next up we have a whole bunch from Ricardo. Uh, this is Ricardo Olivia Alonso. And oh, I love these isometric things. Oh, it moves to... Super nice, really, really cool. I'm guessing we're gonna have a few, so I'm gonna go through these pretty fast, Ricardo, just because we do have a bunch of submissions. Ooh, and we, uh, we have Mario on the TV too. <laughs> Look at the lighting, even like the, the pad here is lighting up. The, just like the general lighting, even on the floor and stuff like that though, like ignoring the TV. Um, and even just a little bit of extra outside the scene. Really, really, really cool. And this one's only with HTML. <sighs> Really, really nice. And there we go, another one. Oh, here we have a little bit. I'm always curious when I see these, just because I know some of them had, so we do have some JavaScript on this one, okay. Which is fine, I don't mind. I said that you could. Um, but just a little, these isometric things, and it's just the JavaScript's just helping us get like the movement, right? Um, like this, so really, really cool. Next one up from Ricardo as well. We have this bedroom scene right here. These, yeah, I love these, the, the style of these, the look, like look at the lighting coming through the window uh, and even with the shadow from the couch and everything, like super, super cool. I love it. And the last one, I think from Ricardo, it even has sound. I'm not gonna put my sound on, but it even has sound. Can we close it and open it? I wasn't sure. Or if I do this, would it, I, I had, I was like, it looks like we could actually start it. We can definitely start it and music starts playing and then you can turn it off. Ricardo, you're up to some real magic here. So good stuff, uh, I'm impressed. Here is one by Alvaro Montoro with a nice little, is it a gazebo? It is a gazebo, <laughs> um, a 3D gazebo, CSS only. Very, very cool. Nice little close up spin by there. That must have taken a long time to make. <laughs> That's all I'm gonna say for that one. Oh, and here we get those like triangle-y shapes up here too um, that I mentioned before. We can start and stop that. Oh, and look, we get some hide and show textures as well. Interesting, we can stop the animation. And here's a Duracell battery, also by Alvaro. 
and spin it around. We get to all the different looks and it's basically a cube. We have the text, but we have to build these little knobby things here at the top too. Uh, and all of that. So there's a lot going on here. I'm yeah, you guys are, you guys are all magicians. This is incredible. Here is one where actually this looks a little familiar. I think we know it. This is actually, um, from a similar one. So I'm guessing Catan, uh, that is by Catan exactly. And if I look at that going around like that, uh, this room, I did a tutorial similar to this, but this sort of takes the step to the next level where I looked at how to do this card um, effect. But here we have the little fireworks going for uh, Diwali, which is really cool. And those fireworks fireworks are super cute. Uh, so that's really nice. And then here at this other side, just that, um, and you know, the gradient text that has that nice little animation and everything, all the bright colors for Diwali and stuff. Nice little effect that goes on with that. And I love the 3D text thing like that. It's super cool. Nice. Here we have this of Flip the Coin by Kareem Kram. When you click, you get a nice little satisfying flip of a coin. Awesome. So cool. So fun. I love that. And just that 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 animation at the end really makes it a lot more satisfying where you get that little poof. So you, you know it hit. Because especially we're not in like a 3D realm, we're just on this gray floaty surface. So if it just stopped, you would get the idea. But because you get that animation that goes with it, it gives it that feeling of a little bit of an impact. So it just brings home that, okay, we've hit the ground now. So a nice little touch there that I think adds a lot of extra realism to it. This one by Zenith 20 Programmer. And do I have a name for Zenith? I don't have a name for Zenith. We just have, that is your name. Zenith 20 is your name. We get this nice, cool 3D cube. They have their own YouTube channel. Awesome. They're 14 years old making stuff like this. Mini portfolio. The only thing I would say if, uh, I, I mean, I think it's really, really awesome. If there was a way to pause the animation just so I could get, you know, make it a little bit easier to interact with it or to like, oh, I want to read what it says here. Or I like, I missed the link and now I have to wait for the whole thing to come around again. Um, so if there was, and maybe I'm missing it, but if there was a way to pause the animation, it would just make it a lot easier for people to sort of pause, they can read it, hit play again, um, but very fun. Or if, you know, you wanted to bring in some JavaScript, then being able to interact with it a little more um, could be really, really cool, but it's already, it's a really fun take on the cube that I've never seen before, giving different information like this for like a little mini portfolio. So it's pretty fun. Did you see that? Did that just assemble itself? <laughs> Who's this by? This is by Adam Kuhn. Um, so I'm going to refresh that because I really do think it assembled itself. Was it just something weird? I refresh now and it's definitely not assembling itself. <laughs> I'll see when I'm editing this if, if what happened happened there. But look at this. We have animated text on the side here. We have the menu. It says I can click. What happens if I, we zoom in if we click? And like there's no it zoomed out on its own there's lots of keyframes in here i'm guessing because we have no javascript going on um just the movement to give it the speed and everything and the camera moving a little bit the whole time the flapping of this uh adam like super super cool i love it really 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 awesome <laughs> what are you looking for <laughs> this is by san meat um yeah a bouncing eyeball It says 3D eye and it's a 3D eye. And I like that it, it's bouncing, but it's not just bouncing. You have the squishiness, you have it looking around and just that the, the lighting that is on there looks really, really good. So awesome. A little creepy, but pretty awesome. Queen, nice. Who's this by? Uh, this one is by Mandeep and, oh, well, there we go. We get, if we go, we hover, we get the effect uh, going. And then when we come off, so a nice little 3D effect there to make a little iPod-ish. And this is by Brizzler Dev. And we get these nice little stacking logos. Nice little stacking effect. It makes me think of that other one that we saw before that would it was it wasn't rotating, but it sort of would come out and go back in um, on hover. But a nice little stacking spinning effect there with the and it also looks a little bit nicer with the rounded corners on it. Um, rather than just being the square, it just makes it look like, oh, it's not just a div that you flattened it actually gives it a little something else uh, and the different colors to obviously help with that really cool so good stuff brizzler and next up we have benjamin and this is benjamin there's no javascript on this page this binary 3d calculator can add two binary numbers and display the result in binary without javascript logic is pure html i'm impressed i don't know binary at all but let's just throw some random stuff in here and see what happens that plus that gives us that uh, in decimal and hexadecimal. So 
I like, again, a nice, cool, interesting use of 3D cubes. It's also really cool that the cubes are all in perspective with each other. So it's sort of like we're looking in the middle and they're, they're bending outwards on both directions. That's really fun. Uh, the spinning effect, I was trying to click this and like it's not working. That's our result. Um, so yeah, a nice little spin effect there that works really well. And there's no JavaScript for any of it, which I'm curious about how you do to do that. But obviously it's possible. I'm just curious about the results. I guess it's all just conditional based on what's selected and there's a way and then because let's just look at the result and the results are like spinning. So it must be like there's all different divs placed that have all potential numbers and then yeah, I don't want to know the logic behind that, but very nice uh, job on it. I'm impressed. Here we have a really cool effect. I want to watch it before I see who it's done by. I love these things. That's so satisfying. This is by Trenton Stetson. Very cool stuff, Trenton. I love it. I could just, it's mesmerizing watching something like that. And that the, the lag behind the animation is just really satisfying. Really, really cool. And then we get another cube. And I knew we'd have a lot of cubes, but another take on the cube with some interesting colors on there, actually. Um, this one is by the Captain Waffles. My oldest son would be very happy. Uh, my His favorite food is... Waffles, and I think you've been on my Twitch streams previously. I could be wrong on that, but I think I remember the name. So very nice on that one. We have a scroll down. This one's by Sabalksidger, and I said your name wrong, and I apologize. So we can scroll down. Look at that. And keep on scrolling down, or I can scroll up. So we have some scroll position with a spinning cube in the middle. And that cube in the middle is like locked in the scene of this bigger cube. So yeah, that's cool. We're getting like the cube is spinning on its own axis, but it's locked to this axis that I can then spin around. This is really, really cool. And so next up here, we have this one. This one is by Dream Rider. And Dream Rider, see it in use on another page. Um, but we get the idea here, read more. And we get these, all the different things. You get, again, another cube that has like information showing on it. And that you can then click read more and get more information. So I would say, I, I, well, let's go see how it actually is being used in use. I'm just curious. So here we can see it there. So the one issue is if somebody wants to read more on that one and then it's gone, they have to wait for it to come all the way back around. So just be careful with things like that, just to make sure that like you're not making it much harder from a usability standpoint. Um, so if you had a little like control that could then like click just to, like, if you missed the one you wanted that you could easily get to it um, quickly. It could be an extra little like bonus feature just to make it a lot more usable, but a very cool effect there. And I like that you like we know there's more coming because it's see through and we can see that there's more on the way. Now, their, their username here is John Doe, uh, so I don't know if they want me saying their real name, so I'm not going to say it. I will just stick with John Doe. And so we get it's a happy Tahar Tahar. I haven't heard of Tahar before from Nepal. Super cool. Nice little effect there. And I sort of like that it moves over a little bit as it opens so it stays centered. So thank you very much for that. Very nice. We'll look at this at the Umbrella Corporation. Very nice. Got some Resident Evil fan fans. And this one's by Gore. And it's fun that we, you know, it's doing the spin this way, but we're also slowly rotating that way. Love it. Uh, happy Halloween. This is probably because when I asked for this, it was very close to Halloween where we are very behind. So we have videos, but it looks like videos playing on each side or... It's either a GIF or a video, and I think it's the same one on all of them. Very nice. Very Halloween-y, especially with the glow there as well. A nice little use of 3D cubes. And I tried to group ones by um, person, uh, but my, my Google Sheet didn't, didn't do it on this time. So this is another one by Trenton uh, Stetson that we had another submission from before. So very cool. Thank you for that. A house, we can use the arrow keys to rotate. Look at that. Let's do it that way a little bit, and then let's rotate this way. We have... A roof on one side, but then we can see it in the house. Let's see if I can, once we're off axis, this way. There we go. We can see inside the house now. Super cool. This one is by Mike Bryan. Thank you very much for that, Mike. It'd be nice if we could also do it with the keyboard, um, with the mouse, since we're using JavaScript in there anyway. A nice little way you could try and take that to level up and explore a little bit more. But even seeing through the windows is also very cool. Um, that's a nice just little touch we can do there because you could just have like the window that's just like a white div basically so we can't see inside and we have to rotate around. So very cool we have the, the windows there but that are also see-through. 
Next up, we have this one. This one is by Akash Sisaudia. Open me. CSS is awesome and, and fun. CSS is fun. CSS is easy with Kevin. Thank you very much for that. <laughs> and CSS is beautiful. Nice little gradient animation in the background too. I'm just curious, like say, I'm assuming it's gonna start again or did we get to the end? Oh, and now we're rotating back the other way, aha. And then if I do that, and then it's going to go that way. So when it's closed, it rotates one way. When it's open, it rotates the other way. Very nice. And that's a nice little surprise too. You're expecting, we've seen a lot of cubes. Again, you can just do so many different things with cubes. So a nice little like reveal there that you wouldn't necessarily be expecting. So very nice and very cool. And next up, this one is by Sowanjia. Um, I apologize, is this? We have a slider, but you know what? It isn't, it's like um, a range slider type of thing, but in 3D. Maybe I was zoomed in. When I opened this before, I could have sworn that the angle on it was different, but still a nice little fun 3D range slider right there. And it is just a range slider. We can get that in a 3D landscape, which is fun. Here we have Books for Everyone, and Books for Everyone is by David. Let's go and see, and there we go. And this is fun because it sort of goes with that. And we have a nice little shadow effect on that one too. Um, it goes well with the book theme of like, we want more information on the book and it's actually opening us to show us the information on the book and we can favorite them. And this next one's also by David and he said that it's made to learn not to wow. So let's see what that one is. And we got ooh, a little popping effects that can come off on that. Very cool. And there's nothing wrong with making projects just to learn not to wow. All right, very cool. Let's go on to the next one. So thank you for the two submissions, David. Hover to see a visualized box model. Ooh, I'm interested in this. This one's by Evan. And we get all the different pieces. That's really cool. Again, I, I, we had one of these a lot earlier on. I was a sucker for it. It sort of just broke apart. Um, so here again, I like that. We get the stacking of everything coming up. Um, and then with it stacked, we're also getting like a description of what each part in the box model is. So a nice little fun way to visualize that. Very cool, Evan. And we have another one from Evan here. We get the nice little spinning, spinning effect here. I'm just curious. Oh, are they links? I'm not even, let's just click. Can I click? We're also in a code pen. No, I can't click. They do look like they could be potentially links. But nice little 3D effect there. With this like 3D plane, I saw it going around. I wasn't sure, but it's like 3D divs this way that the pieces are connected to. So you can sort of see the carousel -y things that they're attached to. Welcome to my CSS animation playground. This is by Bjorn B. Use the arrows to navigate on. Oh, there we go. Let me turn the lights on. I love it. Let's go to the next one. Blurred background effect. Very cool. Oh, it's cool. It's the back outside of the box. The outside of the box is blurred if you're hovering on the inside. Reload for a new picture. Ah, there's the 3D. I knew we were going to get to one, so I was going to cycle through them. A fun little 3D effect there. Like um, those, what are they called? There's the boats that have the big things in the back, the ferry boats that in the old days that had those big propeller things that would turn to move them around. Very cool. Dropping grid, you got our snake effect there just because it's looping all the way around. Very nice. Fun little portfolio. I like when everything's like completely different from one another. Um, and it's just sort of like different little pleasant surprises as we go through. Uh, I think I'm going to stop there. Oh, we did. I'm happy I kept going because we got another 3D, another 3D one. This would be the last one I look at on here. So the ball bounces and then it bounces away. And that's cool. And then the next one's going to eventually bounce and bounce away from us or go that way. Very cool. So again, I love this. This is the lesson that I did with Emmett, but taken to the next level. So you learned how to do it. You got a cool, like a really cool pattern on the ground there, but then also looking at a different technique or a different thing you could do with the animation to try and step your game up even more. So really, really awesome. Here's a 3D lighthouse by Adir SL. We have another one from Adir coming up as well in a second. A very nice 3D lighthouse. And oh, I opened the same one twice. <laughs> so there's the, we just have the two, uh, the two versions of it, I think. Yeah, the, the regular code pen and then the, the preview. So very cool idea. I like it a lot. Lighthouses always look cool. You could slow the spin down a little bit. Just make it a little bit more subtle. Let us relax while we look at the lighthouse. I think I'd like that. Um, right now, I feel like if I was on that, I'd be getting nauseous, you know? <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, it looks really good. Awesome stuff here by Pete Barr. And I have a whole bunch from Pete Barr coming up and, and we're including them all because look at that. Isn't that nice? 
I like the, the, that loading in animation, very cool. It is using GSAP for the animations here, um, but and GSAP is, is great. If you want to get into more advanced animations, like GSAP makes a lot more sense than doing everything um, CSS only. So there's the first one by Pete. Um, we got another one here, Lemonheads. Oh, look there, I was like, where's the 3D? And then all of a sudden the 3D came in there um, and gave us that little, that little pleasant rotating surprise. Super cool. I love the aesthetic of this one. That looks really good. Another one by Pete here. Uh, CSS kinetic type poster. Just read that the, the shadowing on, on everything there really makes it hammer home and to be able to work. Very nice. Really cool. And another one by Pete, I believe. Yes. Here's some cards coming out. Look at that. The cool club. Nice. And do we have another one from Pete? We do. Some, oh, oh. That's satisfying. Walking things like that are fun. <laughs> Look at those guys go. <laughs> and even with the reflection on the ground and stuff. Very, very cool. Again, like this would be fun to see even without that reflection, but by having the reflection there, just because it is just a white canvas effectively, um, it looks like there's a bit of lighting on it, but having that reflection there just really helps say that this is where the ground is. So have, you know, that, that always helps. And, and another one by Pete, oh my goodness. GSAP is amazing. <laughs> Very awesome. And another one by Pete. I said we had a lot coming. So here's a nice little, sort of like a loading animation. Cube stripe loader. Exactly. We have a, a 3D little cube loading animation. Very, very nice. Very aesthetically pleasing. All the colors and everything used in all of these ones from Pete are just really nice. The, the aesthetics of all of it. Um, of all of these are really, really pleasant and very nice and, and very different. Here's another, this one's also by Pete and it's another just really cool, the aesthetics, like the dark, dark brownish color here with the red just works really, really well. The glow that looks like it's on those blocks too, um, everything about it and like the, the outside glowy things, like even you see like there was the animation on the out, there it is again, like really, really awesome. This one is by Nell Cousin. Have you ever had the feeling where you're not sure if you're awake or still dreaming? The one, the nice little 3D flip over. I would say just one thing that could help with it is if it wasn't like, because it's black on black, but like the there's like a cart, you know, there's, there's like a physical thing with the rabbit. Um, but because the background is the exact same color of it, we don't really see it coming around as much. So if there was a little something, like a slight difference in color, for the background on this side, you'd see it more as it's coming around, I think, or if the background was a slightly different color instead of pure, pure black, one of the two, um, I think it would just sort of help fill in that, like that last little touch um, that would just make it feel more like it's flipping around instead of just sort of like sliding out like that. But very nice. I love little, I love the spinning effects like this. They're always fun. Um, this one is by Alvaro Montoro, who I think we already had, or I've talked about before. This is a step tracker, show details. Did I look at this one in a one of my React videos? I feel like I've seen this before. It looks a little bit different than what the one I saw though. So maybe it's a stepped up version or a different version of it. Alvaro, I, if, if I haven't mentioned you earlier in this video, I definitely recognize the name. So I know for a fact I've seen stuff from Alvaro and I think I've mentioned him in my reaction videos in the past. Very awesome, very cool. Uh, here is a 3D cake by S. Sahariar, sorry for mispronouncing your name. Um, Sahariar, 3D cake, look at that. Very nice, we have a few from S. Sahariar. Very clean looking. Let's go see the next one by Sahar. Chess pieces, show controls. So I could actually play chess right now. Oh, we can rotate the board around, very cool. Highlight pieces, hide borders. I'm just curious. Oh, it's even like animated there to bring them in. Reduce animations with animations, disable scroll, spin 360. Very cool. Hide controls. Lots of detail in there. Lots and lots of detail. I'm impressed. Um, and here's the other one by Sahariar, which is a guitar. We got more controls. Look at this. Look at this. I mean, just the strings and everything on there. And again, the, the details that are going into all of this are really, really awesome. I shouldn't have rotated that much. Oh, I can set up a spin. Disable scroll, spin. And you can control the timing of it. Do you want it to spin quickly? Do you want it to spin slowly? And how long, this, so 
There's an A and B. I don't know why we have an A and B. We can dig in deeper, but uh, we don't have time for that right now. Uh, but yeah, really, this really, really cool. Here's another Rubik's Cube. This one's by Brian Alexander with a nice little animation on it to rotate us around as it look let it lets us look at all the different size i'm just watching the shadow animation right now for it to turn that way yeah that shadow animation is really really good and i know that that's not necessarily very easy to do so very good stuff on that dobromir dobromir and we get this nice carousel 3d carousel i sort of like that we have the transparency on the side but we can see what's in the middle uh, just because it makes it a little bit more you know it hammers home that 3dness of it all just a little bit more so very cool uh, thank you for that. I'll go with Dobro123 um, instead of butchering your actual name. De Debromir. I think I got it. Uh, next up we have two from Garrett. So this first one is, we can see he's done a lot with 3D, but he did submit, I think it's this next one specifically. So I'm going to take a look at that one. Rotating draft and chessboard with CSS only. No images are used. Very nice. There's like a nice like ringed texture on that actually. That's really cool. I wonder if that's something else that's like an, a gradient placed on top of the entire thing to give us that texture. And as we saw, there was some 3D text and other stuff that looked really good as well, but we're gonna have to keep on trucking on this one. But look at that, with a nice little hover effect. So this one is by Rennie Vanderland, which we have one more submission from as well coming up in a second. Uh, but a nice little, an, a, an interesting take on the, the 3D spinning stuff. We've done cubes, we've done 3D text. We get like sort of a flat circle, but it's not flat. It's like these flower petals that are semi-transparent. And let's go. Oh, and here, I, I saw we had two submissions, but look at this one. Oh, look at the shadow. Cool. I love it when people give us controls on stuff like that. Look at that. <laughs> I guess it's the height that's set on them. It's the first time I've seen border radius 100% not actually look really bad. It gives us this flower petal look. Super cool. And then you can... What's that doing? That's a border around the whole thing. Ah, interesting. Okay. So it gives us more... Hmm. Very neat. Very, very cool. I love this. I love when you get controls and it's in like real time like this. It just makes me so happy. I just realized the letters, it's probably some um, blend modes going on there. Really nice. Uh, really good stuff, Rene. Cool. Next up, we have this by Varun Bis Basin. It's like a, a lamp. I'm guessing this is a lamp holding. We get the nice soft glow coming around. So this is where if you add a little bit of transparency, if it is a lamp, maybe I'm completely off base, but if it is like a lamp that's glowing, just a little bit of transparency coming on that can be nice because, you know, usually at the glass, you have that transparency. You see the other sides a little bit. Um, and I think it would just really hammer everything home on it, but really nice. Next up, we have this one by uh, Jihad Kurdo, Kurdu, sorry, Kurdu, I think. Um, another Rubik's Cube that's rotating, rotating around. A nice detailing on the Rubik's Cube, actually, where we get like the in, inside spaces. It looks like we actually have like a little bit more shape going on. Like you actually have the little notches and stuff. Looking really, really good. Awesome. Next up, we have a spinning globe in this really stylized look that my I, I also have like a million tabs open right now um so but definitely a lot for the browser to handle on this one with css only going on here really cool placing all of that on and making it spherical that must have taken a while <laughs> that's this one's by fernando menendez really awesome really cool um i'm the amount of work that must have gone into this um beyond the coloring even and just setting everything up positioning all of the dots in the right place creating like the matrix or what, however you would have done it to get everything in the right place really awesome here's a beating heart by michael porag do -doom, do -doom. very cool oh if i click it, it sets back sets it back to like we can just look at it and we can let the animation run cool nice stuff michael next up we have oh look at that that's really ooh. That's really cool. This is by Anna. Oh, Anna. <laughs> if you don't know Anna, uh, this is Anna Tudor. She's up to all sorts of crazy stuff all the time. Um, just here, like, the reason that my, my ooh and then ooh was just like, already it's just really cool seeing it. You have a nice texture on it, but then like you have the 3D-ness. Like, it's not just a flat moon. We have a thickness to it. And then the one that really got me was this one here. Um, just because not only is it expanded like this is, uh, but we actually have like each piece i don't know what the terminology is for that but 
it's another level of 3D-ness <laughs> that's coming on that. And I think I have a few from Anna, so thank you very much for this one. Even this, like, look at the string, just the, having that texture on the string there to, to hammer it home, the different textures on the wood. Really, really cool. Uh, yeah, so let's see what else. And it looks like we can get some music playing if we wanted to as well. Let's see what else uh, Anna has given us. So here's another one. Pure morphing polyhedra with some rotating text. Oh yeah, look, it's changing. We had no JavaScript. Look at that. And then it's going to morph back the other way, I'm assuming, at the next stage. Oh my goodness, there was another stage to it. <laughs> I was waiting for it just to go back to what we had at the beginning, but no, we got we got another level of, of coolness happening. Oh, I get it. And we see what it's doing up here. I was just like, so it's collapsed too, and then it's going to turn into the dodecahedron. Then it's going to rectify too. Oh, that's so cool. And then we're getting... I, so I think this is sort of where we started, right? An icoside de decahedron. And then reverse rectify to, so uh, that's really cool. Awesome. And I think the last one from Anna, look at that glow in the middle. That's just one of the, this one's super fun. It's sort of like disintegrating as it's going and then building itself back up. And it's like the energy ball in the middle there. Um, makes me think of a sun, but it's just like this, the glow that's on it just gives more of a feeling of like some sort of energy or something going on there. Uh, oh, it's, it says it's a candy. I don't know. I think that's just really awesome. <laughs> With, again, there's no JavaScript running, no no GSAP or anything. Anna's, Anna's one of those people who just creates amazing things, um, and I have no idea how she does it. <laughs> yeah, really, really awesome. Here, we have another one to watch. Open To open the watch, click on the lid. And who's this one by? That was, we had a few from Anna. This one is by Sash, Sashtij, Sashti. Uh, oh, to open the watch, click on the lid. To close the watch, click on the button. Click on the lid. And then we click on, oh, I'm guessing this button. And then we can close it. I don't know if you need the description, the, the little modal that popped up. It made me think like, I didn't realize I had to exit. Um, I don't think, I don't know if it's needed. Maybe something on the lid just itself to sort of show that it's clickable. You get the hand, you, you can see that you can click, but yeah, really, really awesome. Very cool. Uh, and I like the um, sort of like it closes, then we get that nice closing animation. Just even the coloring on that with a gradient just hammers it home. The nice little hinge on it and everything. Very cool. Here we get a, what looks like a 3D card by Anya. And let's go and see what happens when we flip it over. Oh, haha. <laughs> So details, so there, and then I like that we get that little thing, but um, there's the back face visibility. So I'm seeing one of the backs right now, which I'm assuming wasn't uh, intended because the coloring and everything on here is so nice. Click the button to flip the card. Yeah, so at one side, we're not getting the back face visibility, but on the other side, we are. Um, so something happened along the way, and I'm assuming especially with how clean that side looks. I like that little starting animation the other way before it clicks over though, and the font choices and stuff. It looks really good. So just a little back face visibility would fix that. And then, yeah, very cool. So thank you for the submission, Anya. And let's go on to the next one, Nature. So this one is by Nephi. Oh, there we go. That's cool. Nice little sort of intersection like this that's spinning around. Nice exploration of some of the things we can do with perspective in 3D. Very cool. Next up, ooh, this looks interesting by Alex, I'm guessing. Alex Chemis, where we get a little shadow. And even look at the lighting on the ball, too. So it's this cool. So obviously, it's, a, I guess, a few different animations that are all linked to the mouse positioning. And so as we drag the light source, everything will just automatically, like, the ball, the light source and the shadow on the ground are just opposite one another. And, Right, and then just a bit of work, I guess, on the ball. And that's what really, the, the lighting on the ball is the best part. That lighting on the ball is really nice. The shadow on the ground, maybe if we got it to get to zero at one point, just like a bit more of a fuzzy edge on it, because it like the lighting on the ball is very fuzzy. Um, so a little bit more on the other one as well would just make it, actually the one on the ground to get it to look really good to be hard, because it would actually have to stretch out a little bit. Instead of being a circle, it would have to be an oval, just because if you took a ball and do a flashlight, I'm pretty sure you'd get more of an oval-y look to it. 
Um, so to actually get it to be really good, but even if you just fuzzied out the sides, I think it would be perfect. Oh, this one's fun. I like that. This one's by Michael Porag again. See, I thought I grouped everybody, but obviously I did a bad job of that. There's just been too many submissions, <laughs> but a nice air balloon right here by Michael. Really, really awesome. Nice little animation that's not just like one thing repeating, repeating, repeating. We have it's rotating. We have the movement up and down that's different as time's going on. So a little bit of extra work uh, gone into that to make that work. Here we have another rotating scene, an old TV rotating around. Um, this one is by Orville Chomer. Orville, thank you very much for that one. One thing they could, if you pulled the perspective back just a touch, I think it would just hammer, it would make it feel a little bit more... Like right now, I think just see, I'm terrible, terrible, terrible. If you watched my 3D card on grid video, you'll see like, I have no idea how perspective works, but I think if we pulled the perspective back a little bit on this, it would just make it feel a little bit more natural. Uh, if I'm remembering it's either, it must be backwards more. I think that's the one. Uh, but yeah, I think it looks really cool. Nice work on it. I like the shadows. It's not just a perfect cube. You actually have a rectangle. I think that's harder. Maybe the video playing on it, which is really cool. So this dartboard is by Joel Nixon. So we have it spinning around on itself. We could just do it, um, if ever, you, I saw it on the last one too, where you get the, the scroll bars that appear and disappear um, on these just because of the scene and how the scenes move around. So just doing an overflow hidden on the body could help with that. Um, a little bit of shadowing on these guys. And I think the shadow, like if you had a gradient, I don't know if you'd have to play with that a little bit or not. Maybe it's harder than I'm thinking because of the light source. Maybe it wouldn't work, especially because we have a wobble. Like it's not only spinning, but the center is sort of like we're, we're not perfectly done. We're off kilter. So maybe the shadowing on that would be harder than I think. But a little bit of shadow, if you could do it on these, again, would just on the, the dart itself could really hammer it home, but it's still better than I could do. So um, <laughs> it's easy for me to comment. I don't know how I'd even begin to make something like this. So, so that one's by Joel Nixon. And next up we have this one. This one is by Timothy Taran and it's a plane and I'm guessing written by Timothy Taran. When this loaded, I saw it in 3D. So I know there's a 3D aspect. Ah, there we go. We get a nice 3D plane, and then I'm guessing it's going to come back around. Super cool. I like all the different pieces. Uh, it'd be kind of cool if the finish state or the beginning state was just rotated a little bit, um, or if there was even like a replay button or something, just so I could go back through it. Uh, I'm nitpicking, obviously. But like here, you can see the whole thing is 3D. Then when it goes back to its resting state, it just looks sort of 2D-ish. Like we don't get the magic of it being 3D right now. But you put a lot of hard work into this. And so, you know, show that off, show off all the hard work you've done. <laughs> right. Maybe the beginning state, it goes all the way, but when it finished, or you're probably just rotating the animation back and forth though. So maybe I'm nitpicking or you just have, so just like if the start and end was just a little bit off, I think it could be, again, show off a little bit of what you're doing. And next up from Aaron, we have this one. This reminds me of one that I did a reaction video to, but it's different. Is it different? Yes, it is different, but it's really cool. <laughs> Again, one of those ones that's just super satisfying to watch. I'm guessing you only, this is where you build the cube once, you're animating it, and then you're just having to position everything properly. And there's some nth child selectors probably going on. So whether it's from the top, the middle or the bottom, how it's growing, um, but actually getting it, you know, I'm making it sound easy. This is not easy and it's really, really cool. And again, very satisfying to watch. And that one is by Aaron. All right, next up we have, uh, I see uh, they shared this one before they were, when they were working on it, I think, or after it was finished, maybe it's going to slide through. So I saw they shared this one with me on Twitter. This is by Siddharth Porwell. Um, and then it's going to go in under the table, throw it in the garbage and then starting over again. Very cool. Building a, a sandwich in 3D with CSS. Super cool. First attempt at first attempt at 3D CSS. Like you're putting us all to shame here. <laughs> really, really awesome. Um, yeah, I'll go with Cuber because I think I, I completely mucked your name up. So awesome. Really cool. Here is one by MD Rahain Alam. Alam. I am. My name is, and then it rotates around in 3D, and then we get that coming back the other way. That's fun. 
it's a nice little different take on some of the 3D spinning text, like single cards we're doing. Here we have like multiple cards going around and stuff. I like the other side more than this side. It's more playful with the turned pieces like that. Um, and because you have multiple colors, you can actually see how they, they line up. One thing that could be nice, just if ever you wanted to play with it more, is just at the end of the animation, if it paused for a little bit, and then so you had like a little rest, you could see it, and then it started when it went back the other way. Um, be a nice little touch just to give us that second to read it, and then it kicks back in. Look at this one. This one's by Tino Kortveslussi. Sorry, um, with these cubes falling down and going on their little conveyor belt to their own demise. <laughs> and because, I, so it's probably a very similar uh, like setup for all of them because you have the different animation speeds. They're always just changing. It makes it, it's the same thing running all the time, but it just makes it feel more random and more natural because there's that delayed animation because it's on the different speeds. I'm guessing they're all exactly the same. The spacing looks a little bit different. But each track is on its own, just looping animation, right? But because of the, and maybe there's like a set delay that's a little bit different on each one, but it just gives it a, a very natural feel because it looks very random how they're falling. Um, so it's probably a combination of maybe a slightly different delay and then just the timing. One's faster, one's slower, and then hover me carefully. We have to be careful with this one. Uh, this one's by, oh, I see why it says careful, uh, by Free Timmerman. And so let's go and check that out. Uh, so let's move slowly, but this is with CSS only, I think. Um, so we, which is why you have to build like your grid system of hovering areas and we have a globe that we can spin around. Really, really cool. Yeah. That's one of these, again, one of those ones where I know technically how it works, but I don't, I wouldn't know how to do it myself. <laughs> cool stuff. Let's go on to the next one, which is, oh my goodness, this is by Camcell. Look at this, another one of those isometric style ones. Very nice. Pure CSS, crossy road. Pure CSS, guys. The time that would have to go into something like this, it's just really cool. I like the chicken on the, we have a, we have a pile up because of a chicken crossing the road. <laughs> but just the style of it with the isometric design, all the work that must have to go into something like this. Very, very cool camcel. Nice stuff. Next up, we have this one by Fitz. Uh, another Halloween one, again, when I, issued this challenge it was very close to halloween so so we, i mean you can sort of yeah really cool the there's a lot of work in this one it's not just a sphere we have all the pieces that are cut out of it um yeah that would not be easy <laughs> at all <laughs> yeah <laughs> I, I don't know what else to say i'm at a loss of words um here we have a few from jay so a bit like anna i know jay um jay's work and uh he's up to some very cool stuff. I have a feeling, yeah, if I click here, it's going to explode out of there. If I come over here, there's sound with this one too, as it clicks around. Super satisfying little clicks too. That The sound you picked is perfect for it. That's a really creepy picture though, Jay. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll end it. We'll end this one on that nice little shadow effect there. So we have like the 3D thing there, but we also have that interaction with it. Oh, we can change the grid size. Let's make the grid really small. Oh, okay. So now it's really big and then 14. So lots of little grids, which the browser had a little bit of trouble with that one. Eh? Whoa, there we go. <laughs> uh, awesome. And we're getting close to this holiday season. So maybe that's a better one to leave it on. So that one's from Jay using GSAP and React on Flippy Snaps. Here's this Stack Overflow stuff, which I've seen a little bit of in the past. So he has a few different versions of it. We'll go with the one we can click, because why not? Clicking sounds interesting. Uh, so we get the, the Stack Overflow. There we go. And he has other ones where it's like running constantly. Very nice. Very satisfying. Super cool. And do we have another one from Jay? We do. Oh, look at that. No motion. Medium motion. Lots of motion. Very cool. Choose a team. Blue. Oh, and I love that Jay always puts the sounds into his stuff. Just these little like surprise sounds that are always fun. Very fun. Very cool. Thank you, Jay, for submi submitting a few things in here. Awesome. Next up, we have another Rubik's Cube CSS only from Ali. Yeah, really cool that we're, we're getting like, we're not just seeing the Rubik's Cube spin around. We have the different axes that are breaking apart on their own in both ways. Uh, super nice touch there.
the different animations going on and different speeds and stuff. I wonder if that's a different timing function that they put on both of them or if it's like here it's a delay. So there's different delays on each axis. And I wonder if it's all the same animation with different timing functions and delays or if there's a little bit more to it and actually different animations running on them. Um, Cause yeah, you can do that in different ways. This is really cool. <laughs> They're following my mouse around. It looks like, could we get that on YouTube? There is a YouTube link there for anyone who wants. This is by Brian Stoner. And yeah, look at that. Super cool. That's so fun. <laughs> And there's no JavaScript. So here's another one where we can, you can set up, I'm guessing there's a grid and based on where the mouse is, which one's being hovered on, it affects other things. <laughs> there's no JavaScript, but we have a goofy dog. Very cool. And saying thank you to Jay for the cube styles. So yeah, Brian, really nice. I was, I was very much expecting some JavaScript in this one. To see none in there is pretty awesome. All right, and we're getting close to the end, guys. Here is a bouncing ball from Mayer. So it might not be as impressive as the last one we saw, but it's still so much hard work here. So Mayer, awesome. Uh, like just taking these steps to take what you're learning with the 3D stuff, challenging yourself to be able to pull this off. Uh, really, really cool. The lighting on there looks awesome. So the next stage, let's add a shadow down underneath. It's been a long time since you submitted this. Maybe you already have, and that would just be, you know, give us that extra perspective and make everything look really, really good. But super job, off to a great start. And then here we have a Hover Me by, oh, another one by Mayor. Oh, look at that. That's a nice one, Mayor. I like this one a lot. The little 3D thing, nice little hover effect there. Nice job. And oh, we have a King of Hearts here. This is by Krutik Rot. That's just a really nice looking card. <laughs> we have both sides of it as it just spins around. Very enjoyable. The animation's really nice because it's not like hitting an ending point. It's easy, like when we get to sort of a resting point, it sort of slows into that point and then goes just to help make it feel a little bit more natural and everything. All right, next up we have a 3D cube. This one's by, oh, another one by Krutik. And if I click me, I love CSS. A <laughs> nice little touch there. I love that. A nice little surprise cube box. Uh, so something something else that we can do with the cubes just to make things a little bit more interesting. We had the reveal. This time we had an opening box. Uh, can I close the box? Let's just refresh. Maybe there's a way to close the box I don't know about, but I just want to see that. Yeah, very satisfying. I enjoyed that. Thank you for, for that one, Krutik. I love CSS. Awesome. So do I. Uh, this one is by Walter Emanuel, and I think we had to scroll down if I remember right to get to here and they made, there we go, a spinning little carousel. And I like that it's sort of like flushing, the, like we're getting to the back and then it's like, we're not just flipping the next one, flipping the next one. It's kind of interesting. It's like you're gone and then there's something else. And then we're flushing that one out and then here's the next one. So a cool little fun way to do that. And the last one's coming up now. And I just want to warn for anybody who doesn't, um, is sensitive to like flashing and stuff. This one does have a lot of flashing that's going to be coming up and it's like really, really constant. So. Uh, just as a word of warning before I go on to that one, it's a cool one. I like it. But again, if you're sensitive to flashing and really quick movements or anything like that, it might not be the right one for you. So, uh, yeah, just, we're going to end on that one. So thank you for that. And let's, let's go and check it out now. And it's right here where it's one of those like spinning the old movie boxes or whatever. This is how they could get like animations, right? First version cartoons, you'd look through the box and You'd, you'd be getting the running horse um, where they had the series of pictures that would spin around. Uh, I think it's it works something like that, right? Um, and here we go. There's a running horse uh, like we used to see in the very old days, like we, as if I was around back then. Uh, but a really nice submission right there. And just in case you're curious about actually how you can create these things on your own, you, you see these, you wanna be able to do it yourself. I have had Amit Sheen join me more than once on how to create some of these things in 3D. So those videos are right here for your viewing pleasure if you wanna check them out. And with that, a really big thank you to my supporters of Awesome over on Patreon, Johnny, Adam, Stuart, Randy, and Tim, as well as all my other patrons for their monthly support. And of course, until next time, don't forget to make your corner of the internet just a little bit more awesome.